Okay, so I sit here. Whew. Okay. So okay. uh, I will in a moment bring in your mysterious press it's guest. Like <laughs> I'm taking a sneak um, peek at the no cards. Snaking, no, no cheating, no cheating. Oh, I'm Brian. Brian, nice yes. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Shamal. Devo. Devo? Yes. Let's just take a breath for a moment. <sighs> so when you're ready, first person can, can pick a card and read it out loud. Look into each other's eyes without speaking for one minute. Wow. Okay. Is that one minute? Is that been one minute? I don't know. <laughs> it felt like less than a minute. <laughs> How would your mom describe you? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, you never want to go to my mother. <laughs> Describing me. <laughs> uh, opinionated? <laughs> she would say I'm tenacious. I have the energy. And I'm a go-getter. So shall I read the next one? Yes. Yes? You ready for it? <laughs> What's the biggest challenge you face in your work? I guess keeping up the energy to keep it going, you know? I think the hardest part can be sometimes having to convince your peers and your funders and your friends and everyone that you matter. Um, and I think that that can be um, exhausting. I feel that in the line of work that I'm in, especially in Afghanistan, one thing that we're lacking is um, the ability to work together. What is the biggest misconception people have about your work? Um, a lot of people think that cancer is a death sentence. Uh, husbands have left their wives thinking that it's the end of the road and thinking their wives are crazy because they have chosen to give up everything and go fight for that one child's life. But yet we have seen so many kids pick cancer. Yeah, I believe so. I have prostate cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think the misconception is that it's glamorous, there's lots of funding, and it's easy. Um, and I think that's a misconception, especially for the younger generation. Most of the donors, for example, say, well, we need to build the capacity of the indigenous people. I think it's the other way around. The indigenous people need to build the capacity of the donors who don't really understand most of the time what is at stake and what needs to be done. Tell me about the moment that you knew you would dedicate your life to this work. Oh, I think, you know, for me, it wasn't one moment. It was a series of moments, but it did start when I was 11. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think you kind of fall into it. I kind of fell into it. I think for me, it was it was 9-11. I remember sort of there was a moment um, when I was talking to a couple of my really close friends and I could sort of feel them being a bit uncomfortable with me, which was a really sort of both painful and hurtful experience that I don't know if I have a choice but to sort of be a part of the solution to this religion and this community that I was sort of very proud of. So I think that would be what it was, what it was for me. Thank you. Very deep. Um, I had a first cousin. In my culture, we call them sisters anyway. And my sister had AIDS. And that was the time when then minister was talking about beetroot and garlic as the remedies for AIDS. And my sister unfortunately died. Oh, I'm so sorry to see that. And from that moment on, I knew that I needed to help people realize better health and that this was a calling for me. Talk to me like I am a four-year-old and tell me what you do for your work. Oh, very good exercise. I do it every day because I have a five-year-old. <laughs> so there are these amazing superheroes that exist across the country that are helping children just like yourself with education or food or health care or shelter. And I help those superheroes do their work better. I educate girls 
and we go door to door. We knock on doors to find all girls who are out of school. And then once the girls are in school, we work to make sure that they're learning, uh, they're thriving, they got life skills, and that they're staying and retained at school. So you know how sometimes you see children and even adults fight? Okay. I work with people all around the world that help prevent those fights and enable people to actually cooperate, you know, and it makes a better world for everybody. What are you afraid to ask for? I got such tough questions, though. <laughs> mm. As a Latina growing up, you're not supposed to ask. And so we have to ask, mm -hmm. and that is not second nature. I'm afraid to ask for her space to retreat into, um, to take some time off. <laughs> and I wish I could ask for a space or I could create that space for myself to to take a step back and, and reflect and, and, and rest and, and, and then regroup and go back? <sighs> nothing. Nothing? No, nothing. I am not afraid to ask anything. I think I'm afraid to ask for everything, in a sense. <laughs> I think, you know, that's, that's one of the things that stopped me at times, is that right. I think, you know, growing up, I always thought, you know, if you're good enough, people mm. will tell you, here, here's a million dollars, congratulations, in a sense. Um, but today I realize that's not how the world works, in a sense. Sort of focusing on my own well-being is something I am afraid to ask for because I know the communities that we support. Um, I know what they go through. What's your prayer for me? For you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I pray that you get the rest you deserve. You gain the courage to be fearless and that you achieve all that your heart desires for your country and for the women in your country. My prayer for you is if you close your eyes and imagine uh, a society that you want to see, may it come true in your lifetime. My prayer for you is that you may find peace, purpose, and joy and satisfaction as you do it. How would you like to say goodbye to me? In, in Gujarati, uh, the language that I was brought up, there is no goodbye. There's aujo, which is come again. And I think that's the way we should we should see ourselves as, as coming again. Oh, can I give you a hug? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, oh, thank you. Bless you. Keep going.